And for more on this, we're joined now by Christopher Sabatini, Senior Fellow for Latin America at the UK-based think tank Chatham House. Now, this earthquake is just the latest in a series of crises for Haiti, coming just over a month after the assassination of its president. Tell us more about the severe challenges facing the country. There are multiple. First of all, you have an unemployment rate that approaches about 80 percent, a uh, poverty rate around the same. And of course, on June 7th, you had uh, the assassination of the then uh, president, uh, Mois, uh, uh, Jovenel Mois. So you've got effectively no government uh, right now. The country had not fully recovered from the 2010 earthquake that devastated the country, although this one, the most recent one, uh, this weekend was larger in scale, but more limited and focused in, in its uh, geography. Uh, and then, of course, you have uh, the pressures of COVID. So this is really a, a, a very sad, unfortunate situation without a government to be able to implement recovery, struggling to do so in a far flung region of the country, where according to most reports, there are only 30 doctors in that region uh, and infrastructure shut down, in many cases having not been repaired from 2010. It's a very difficult situation. And what do you know about any plans to deliver aid after this earthquake? How is that being uh, thought out by authorities? Well, so far, the United States has uh, donated uh, USAID, U.S. Agency of International Development, uh, emergency personnel. Uh, there are also helicopters that are looking uh, in a search and rescue mission. Um, and, of course, the government is pledging to provide that aid. Right now, it's, it's really limited. Air, the airplanes are going in and out of the local airport, Lekai, uh, right now, delivering aid. <clears throat> Supposedly, the hospitals are full. They have done a better job of preparing. Uh, in terms of equipment, but getting it there is going to be a difficult problem. Uh, other countries have pledged their support, but of course, as we're seeing, as the previous story reveals in Afghanistan, in other places, and because of COVID, uh, the world is largely distracted. And so this combination of a uh, basically a, a headless government, uh, donor fatigue and distraction right now, uh, as well as an oncoming uh, tropical d depression is really going to cause a difficult problem for Haiti. Now, many in Haiti are still traumatized by the 2010 earthquake. As you mentioned, that's estimated to have killed more than 200,000 people. What must authorities do differently this time around to assure that their response is more appropriate? The first thing is they need to react quickly to rebuild hospitals. I mean, the, the tragedy in earthquakes like this and most natural disasters, particularly earthquakes, is basically the, the basic foundations and the infrastructure of healthcare is, is, is collapsed. So they need to rebuild the hospitals. <clears throat> they also need to rebuild the infrastructure to and out of. This is not in Port-au-Prince. Uh, you need to get supplies from Port-au-Prince to Lakai to be able to deliver those supplies. Uh, but also you need to repair housing. We, we, we're still seeing from the 2010 earthquakes, people that are still living in temporary housing. So permanent housing needs to be rebuilt as well as the infrastructure that's critical to getting an economy going. We're talking factories, we're talking ports, we're talking highways. Um, that is essential. What we saw last time in 2010, and even President Bill Clinton, who headed the relief efforts, admitted later that it didn't match his expectations under the much vaunted plan to build back better. Um, there needs to be a, a basically an integrated, effective strategy to rebuild infrastructure, but also to ensure that the money isn't siphoned off and goes to its dedicated means. And that's what happened to a large part of the money in 2010 or post-2010 in the rebuilding effort if it was lost to corruption. And let's talk a bit more about the political crisis that is that has been gripping Haiti since the assassination of the president. Uh, where does political power currently stand in the country? Right now, there's an interim prime minister, uh, Henri. He was sworn in. Actually, he was sworn in. Uh, uh, he was nominated the day before uh, the president was killed. Um, and uh, the previous prime minister tried to step in. Uh, he was briefly, he was uh, forced out of, into resignation and Henri was then sworn in. Uh, but right now there's, there were supposed to be elections this year uh, to elect both a, a new parliament and, an, and a, a president as well as a constitution. Those have, uh, those are off the books. Right now, we don't know what's going to happen. There seems to be no plan in terms of convening credible free and fair elections in the country. Um, so right now we're really in a holding pattern. The hope was that the, uh, you know, if you could, this crisis could provide a moment uh, that could allow Haiti to rebuild its political system. You hadn't had elections, parliamentary elections in several years or local elections. The hope was now this could be the moment and to tone down, tone down the, the polarization. But that seems more and more unlikely, especially given this disaster. Okay, thank you for that analysis. Christopher Sabatini, Senior Fellow for Latin America at the UK-based think tank Chatham House. Thank you for joining us here on the program at France 24.